February 2019. I'm at Big Sky. In front of me is the summit where it all began for me here at Big Sky. And I'm thinking this is my sixth year skiing here. And it's been the best skiing of any place I've ever been. Tough getting here. I got stalled in uh, um, Minneapolis for the whole day. But somehow I managed to make it here on the slope in time to ski. Slope opens in 45 minutes and I got my skis right there to be first. All right, I'm always curious to see what the what the year brings. New new lift. Check out this heated seats. And everything. It's called Ram Charger. Riding the lift, riding the lift in style. They continue to upgrade this place, which I really appreciate about this place. But the conditions look just great. Summit. That's where I'm heading. One of my favorite runs. Very steep. The surrounding areas. Incredible. I've come here six years. Still as beautiful as the first time. I'm about to go down this thing. My second run of the day, and we're gonna see what I got. All right. So I was laying on my couch relaxing and I looked out the window and I saw an eagle flying directly down the path of this of this river, the gals. And I said, you know what, it's worth it to get dressed and uh, see an eagle. You don't see an eagle every day. And sure enough, I knew he was going to perch on one of these trees. And he's actually, I'm looking right at him. I'm going to try to get him on the camera right now. Nice little tree. I was um, laying on my couch and I saw an eagle fly right straight up the gallops in here and I crick up my coat on because I had a funny feeling that he might perch in one of the trees and sure enough he did but it's really difficult to film him right now. There's an eagle right over here. I'll show you the gallatin. Eagle's up that away on the left. And I can't quite zoom in on my camera. I have a tough time doing that. Galton looks great as always. One of my favorite times to film it. Got it. He came from this way. He was coming right up here like this and flew over and then right up into that tree. Bighorn sheep, herd of uh, elk, and now an eagle. All in one day. Great sightings. Too much snow was shoveled off the roof. Wow. Wood. Outhouse with newly repaired roof. Still gotta get painted. Tree fell down over here, which I'm glad it wasn't going to cabin. Have to get that taken care of. Another one of my favorite runs, 
And what makes it a favorite run, of course, is the terrain, but also the privacy. Like the last couple of runs I did, there was nobody. Like I'm right here standing in the middle of this beautiful landscape. And I just came from skiing up there. And as you can see, there's no one around. Just gotta love about this place. It's uh, very well run, big and massive. And although it seems like more and more people are coming, you can still find lots and lots of spots like this where you just have it all to yourself. And that's why I love this place. All right, I'm gonna continue down this run. I'm on a lift called Ram Charger. And I am seriously with the baddest skier on this mountain. He's a legend. His name is Sky. I just had to document this guy. I'm going to show you, Sky. Thank Sky. you so much for what you've uh, shown me. Your unique style of going backwards—I've never seen anything like it. The speed and the control and athleticism you show is remarkable. Thanks, man. All right. <laughs> I'm on one of my favorite runs, Bad Wolf. I filmed this a lot. It came from up there. Can't even see because it it's snowing. I'm heading down. Big mogul run. Big open space. As usual, I'm alone or just there's only a couple people on it this time. But uh <clears throat> great run. Met that guy ski, a uh, sky rather. Amazing skier. Going backwards and and plowing and then snow just powder all over him. It was amazing to watch. A lot of these guys are ski bums, they're just outstanding skiing, they just that's all they want to do. Not my cup of tea, but the guy was quite the athlete. All right, let me get back here. Mad Wolf. So I just got done skiing and eating lunch. And this is where I parked my car in the winter. Cool car, actually. Jeep Cherokee. I just came in from the driveway here from 191. If you were to follow that, it would take you to Yellowstone. It's only about 15 minutes away. And then what I do is I walk down this snow-covered road and you come to a gate. <clears throat> I walk around the gate. I'm telling you, I've seen the Gallatin now for so many years and I filmed it. I'm just looking at it right now as I'm filming at just how pretty the colors are. So nice looking. Wow, that's nice. I don't see my bald eagle friend. Which I didn't do a very good job of filming. Down the other side of the Gallatin. I know I filmed this a lot. But when I'm home, going through withdrawal, I'm going to be glad I filmed this. Then I just start following this snow-covered path over the bridge and into the cabin. That was giving me a lot of joy, enabling me to experience a lot. It's looking good, well maintained, which I absolutely feel responsibility of being a good steward of what God has given me. I've got these paths here. A little bit of steep incline. That's the view from my bed. I'm just sitting here reading and my clothes, fire's going. It's so relaxing. The view outside my windows. I remember the scene when I'm back home.
considerably warmer today. Ski conditions were the best in the last three days I was here. So I'm kind of at an impasse. I'm thinking about, praying about, selling the cabin to get a bigger home for my family. And I'm not really sure what to do about that. So I've been praying to God. And it may sound crazy, but God told me to wait four years. I don't know why four years came to my mind. And this one would only be year three. So if I waited another year, I'd have more equity. Maybe the price of the cabin would be up more. And then make a determination. I've gone through a lot in the last decade, financially and emotionally. And I, I'm really just pondering wealth as far as having dollars in the bank versus having this place sit here and continue to pay on it and enjoy it. And that's been my dilemma. But I do trust God and I do believe he'll provide a lot of answers for me. But not being able to come to this place would be a major loss. The frequency in which I've come out here and how much I've seen continues to leave me wanting to see more and there's so much more to see. Again, I never know who's going to watch these journals except me. Maybe my future generations will follow my exploits and my trips out west and encourage my children, Rachel, Daniel, Jackson, Olivia. Maybe your children's children will watch these videos. I don't know who will see them, but they've been a remarkable journal for me to keep. Times when I'm at home and can't get out here to be able to watch and reflect and see what I was thinking at that period of my life. It's been real, as I've said so many times, medicine and very therapeutic to be able to chronicalize if I use that word correctly, uh, my trips out here. So, thinking about what to do next right now. I'm thinking about just going into Yellowstone and maybe just seeing if I can hike if the snow's not too deep. And then you'll see what's what's out there. Yeah, it's gonna be so beautiful. I'm just driving down Highway 191 and I'm gonna uh, try to do a little hike. If the snow's too high, I'm not going to get very far at all. Maybe some cross-country skiers have been skiing and made it, maybe have made a little bit of a path for me to be able to walk, but I just thought it'd be really cool to do a little hike in the winter time if, if the trail's available. Temperatures have warmed up considerably. When I first got here, it was negative four, negative five. Even when I got to the cabin my first day on, on uh, Friday morning, it was zero. So, uh, now I'm looking at the gauge is 26 and considerably warmer. I noticed that even today skiing. So I'll either be doing a pretty cool hike in the snow or take two steps and have to turn around and, and that's that. But it's so much fun just exploring and I always complain about home and, and when I'm at home with boredom. And this place is the furthest thing from boring because there's always something to do. If I wanted to, I could uh, snowmobile course for skiing, fly fishing, which I'm hoping to get in on Tuesday, there's uh, dog sledding, there's of course wildlife sightings, just the scenery is what relaxes you, the scenery is enough to just put you in a trance, because it's just so godly, it's, it's, it's God's creation all around you, and there's nothing boring about that. And that alone just pacifies you if you're not able to get out and do some of those adventuresome activities. All right, driving down Highway 191, looking for a place to hike. We'll see where I wind up. Back home, the pace is so fast and taking care of my beautiful children and businesses and just really fast moving, picking up kids, uh, tending to my school, 
money issues, making sure that you have a good month to get by, and do all the things that you're trying to accomplish, being kind, tithing, which is so important. By the time you get out here, it's almost like you don't want to come at first because you can't get off that, that, that roller coaster. And then when you come out here, it takes about a day and a half, two days, and then right around the middle of that second day, certainly by the third, you just totally feel something release or let just let go. And it's at that moment I go, now I know why it's so important that I come out here several times a year because I think you just need to step away from it and, and get a fresh perspective without any distractions of TV, people, and just being with God, praying about issues so that you're all the stronger for it. over here. It looks like they're doing a little cross-country skiing. That looks good. I don't know what it would, I might have to fall back on that one. We'll see. But I love God so much and every time I leave here I just go, Lord, I just wish I could maintain this feeling that I have once my week is complete and take it back home with me before the daily grind and responsibilities and pressures and hustle and bustle just, just wear you out. There's got to be something at home that you can do to, to acquire this feeling that I have uh, right now. And I don't know if it's just changing my environment in which I live, which isn't going to happen for quite some time. So that's the big riddle right there is the how can I get this feeling of relaxation when I'm back home because the times I come out here are few and far between beginning of February into May end of August. So that's my big challenge right now. Just using this as a journal today. So I tried to go hiking in Yellowstone and the weather is dramatically different. Like a snowstorm. I'm talking only about 15 minutes down the road like a whiteout. I came closer toward the cabin, pulled off to Daly Creek, uh, the first one you come to as you go into Yellowstone, and the snow was just too high. So it was nice seeing the scenery, but without snowshoes or cross country skis, you're not going anywhere. Okay. And with this guy, Sky, he's given me the uh, opportunity and privilege to be able to film him going backwards, coming down this. This run. This guy's insane. He is all that. So I want to film him because you have to see it to believe it. Okay, he should be coming any minute. You meet these guys that have been skiing for years and years, and he actually can ski competitively all over the world. And here he comes now. Let me get this. Here he comes. Look, he just goes backwards and then he plows. Look at this insane stuff. Look at him. Look. look at this. Look at this. Insane, man. So, Sky, AK Snowball, what do we have here? This is one of our many shacks up on the mountain, used for various nefarious activities. <laughs> How about that? I've always heard about these safety meeting places, but never actually witnessed one. This is one of them that's created by the dirt bags that live <laughs> Dirt bags are who we are and part of the... You embrace it, huh? It's a part of the religion of the mountain. It got this you. is where we go to pray. These are our churches. <laughs> I always tell my students, if you want to fly with the eagles, you don't fly with pigeons. So I was able to hitch my wagon to this guy, Sky, who's been showing me all over the mountain, parts of the mountain. This mountain's too big for you to see every part. My mouth is so numb. And he showed You're good.
one more time. I haven't won the video. Probably the warmest day since I've been here. It's uh, been a fabulous trip. <clears throat> the skiing is par excellence. I swear it's some of the best I've ever done. Meeting a lot of uh, cool people this, this trip out. A guy that calls himself Sky. A family I met from uh, close to Pittsburgh. A father and daughter film me coming down one of my favorite shoots. I'm just looking around the scenery and the winter time for some reason I have a tough time getting myself out here. It's like I look forward to it, but there's something that almost holds me back a little bit. And then once I get out here, it's like, what was I even thinking? So I'm just really, really glad to be here. And I'm just checking out my cabin right now to make sure everything looks, looks sound. It's uh, been, I think, six years. There's the back room. Table chair is great. I wish I could use it more. Cabin, I mean, the uh, outhouse has got a new roof. Huh. Look at all that snow that came off the roof. It's a lot of snow. A lot of snow. Trees fell. Get them chopped down and turn into firewood. Just being being here is so peaceful, so relaxing. Such a major difference compared to where I live. And a lot of times people ask me, you go by they say you go by yourself. You get to know yourself really well when you do that. And you spend time, just you, God, in this very wild setting. <clears throat> Some of the greatest days of my life have been out west. Some of the happiest days of my life have been out west. So I'm walking down this path right now. I'm going to walk right out to the river. The snow's deep. tinker with the idea of selling the house, the cabin, for something bigger back home. <clears throat> I think it would, I think it would tear my heart apart. I'm looking at this bridge, and this bridge is really in bad shape. It's only a matter of time before they have to do something with it. Include my 2019 winter adventure here in Montana in Big Sky. I believe it's my sixth year here and it's been another good year. Yesterday was a little complicated when a car got stuck in the driveway and I couldn't get out and I had to have a tow truck come and tow it away so I was grounded for a little while but this isn't a bad place to have to hold up. Uh, great skiing, met some really really interesting people and a lot of reflecting. And as usual, uh, God does an overhaul on me when I'm here. And um, I'm really uh, grateful to him for everything he's given me, everything he's enabled me to see and do, and for the work that he did in me this trip. Because there were some things I had to let go of and things I had to work out. And when you're alone here in this isolated, beautiful setting, uh, and if your heart is open, 
to what God has to speak to you about, then there's a lot to be gained. All right, looking forward to going back home to seeing uh, Rachel, Daniel, Jackson, Olivia, and my family. And uh, I hope to uh, be back here in May, God willing. And we'll see what God has in store for me between now and then. How far did you think we were coming? We'll, we'll, we'll interview here. When we said we were coming out a ways, how far did you think? I wasn't quite sure. I didn't think it would be this far out. I knew I, I knew we'd be out, but I didn't think this far out. Lesson learned. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take that one on the chin. No problem. Uh, no problem. Uh, I got you. Right side out far enough that if you scream, nobody will ever hear you. No, that's fine. That's not. <laughs> lesson learned. Nobody lesson learned with you. No problem. <laughs> Aaron. How's it going? You head of uh, film studies today? Hmm, to documenting? Be, yeah. All right. All right. Pat, out with Dane Traveler today. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm impressed. This is out there. I love the setup. Things I never saw up in Alaska. Never saw an igloo. Never saw an igloo. And uh, never got to go dog sledding. Uh, did, you bring did you bring matches? Uh, I, I just asked, did anybody bring a lighter? Something like that? <laughs> Five things. Five things. I don't go in the woods without. Mm -hmm. I go in the woods without a knife, some cordage, mm -hmm. something to make fire, and a good water bottle in case I need to boil water. I was Pennsylvania Bear Researchers. Probably 18 years. And they're coming out probably. I only missed a few years. This is one of the nicest areas I've seen out of all the times I've come out denning. I'll show you. Great stream. How cool is this? Love it. Great stream. Oh, you all right? Jeremy. Trying to avoid some ice? Just one right. spot here. That's the ice spot. Guy fell on his behind. Only cut in the river. the next one. Cold, not too bad cold. But we're moving too. Beautiful stream. Just hand it up. Mm -hmm. Yes, long. Oh yeah. Here How nice is that setting, huh? Pretty cool, huh? It's a beautiful area. Sprout Forest. It's a good view too. And Bear Den should be about another quarter mile up the, up the trail, I believe. That's right. You hear me, Kyle? So you guys are, I don't know if you're lucky or unlucky because the den is empty and outside the den was bear scat and inside the bear scat are cub claws. Oh, wow. So what does that tell you? Yep, something happened to the cub. She, she ate her cubs for whatever reason. So we have never seen that. Well, I've seen it maybe once, but uh, it's very uncommon. So we're going to go to another den. But uh, if you want to see what a bear den looks like, it's where we were standing right there. But for whatever reason, it's just bears being bears. You know, there's just animals do strange things. And this particular bear, when we went up there, the den was empty. This was outside the den. And if you guys notice, what's that right there? See that? That's a claw. Yeah, and that's a what? Claw. Yep, that's a claw too. So, whenever uh, we always check scat at dens, 
when they're empty and we never see anything but at this one this is what we found of all the den sites I've been to <coughs> like Mark said I never saw one where mother ate her cup but uh, unfortunately that's happened and here's the den site Absolutely nothing. You gotta love that. Leave it to a boy scout to always be prepared, right guys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the years I've gone, I've never seen a mother eat their cub. And in the scat, was uh, claws and baby claws and it was uh, sad. I've never wanted to eat my children. I've wanted to bite my wife. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it at that. Oh, I love you. I still might want to take a little bite. All right. It's a beautiful spot. Come on. We're still working on the collar. Okay, is this for a second? It's on. It's running. It's on. Just make sure. Yep, it sure is. Okay. So. I am very All right. To rub it. Go. 2019 Pennsylvania Bear Research. One of my favorite things to do in this world is go bear denning. And what a privilege it's been. This beautiful coat. Alright. Look at that little guy. I'll pass this on the right now. What do you think, Jeremy? Oh, it's amazing. We'll get Absolutely took, beautiful. It took us long enough to get you out here. Oh, he's amazing. amazing. That bear's in love with you. Yeah. Because huh. he lost his cat. Aaron, oh. holding a bear cup. You good? All right, Pat, you're on. What do you think? How is that? It's pretty cool. Is that one of the coolest things ever? Okay. Like holding one of your children? <laughs> a little furrier? <laughs> red, little, red light? Dude, kiss her. I'll, I'll take your picture. Go ahead. No, no, that's okay. No? I have many. You're on. So uh, let me talk to the, You're on. the bear biologist also. So how heavy is she? That's okay. Soon to be. How heavy is she? I don't know. What you were guessing? I, I said 220. 220? Yeah. She had one cub. And how old is she? She's 19. And we were thinking that maybe this might be one of the cubs that I held at one point. Back at, yeah. back in the day. That's beautiful. All right. Jeremy, what do you think? Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful animal. Absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Haven't seen one this close in the wild. Almost. Does the fur feel like you expected it to? You've uh, touched yes. fur before? Oh, yeah. I've touched fur okay. before. Fur. Yep. It feels very much like it. Bear's as big as you, Pat. Actually, I think 19. you're actually bigger than the bear. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I think she likes you, Pat. <laughs> I'm ready. Aaron, I know you feel more comfortable behind the camera. Certainly. <laughs> but you're on the camera now with a, with a bear. What do you think of that? I'll be able to say something later on. Okay. All right. When do you find this city, us city folk? <laughs> Season, we're thinking like 18 or 19, right? Yeah. yeah. Good expedition yeah. team here, my yeah. main man. Let's just get a little, just each of us hold them, each of us hold them real quick. Like those. Oh, Keep going. Everybody cuddling. Was she underneath her? I can't get all four of you as close as I am. Let me back up just a hair. Little girl. Yeah, it pooped on me earlier, that's okay. It pooped on me earlier. Does it ever get old? <laughs> Couldn't you just take it home? Yeah. It would just stay that little. Yeah. Should I hit it again then? We want all four of these people, so. Yeah. Get your camera back. There. 
Yeah. Um, no, you're walking. Play. My backpack. Yeah. Working? Yeah. It says recording. How many? How many? Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Do I just press the button to stop it? Yep. I think so. Did, uh, Jess, honor. Jess, did you, and uh, Dylan, did you guys get to see the cub much? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Do you see the video? Thank you. Go to Mama. Go to Mama. Oh, Happy to be back with Mom, huh? Oh. Is that precious? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna crawl away once she Do you like her there more? Yeah, it'll be fine. She'll she'll choose to stay once we back out. Pick him up, don't pick him up. Day one, Saturday. It's in the end of May. I'm just taking a look at a moose straight ahead of me. A bull moose, just its racks are starting to come in. And I'm going to show it to you right now. First day here, and I've already saw a moose, a bald eagle, sandhill crane, and there's been talk about a, a cinnamon bear and a grizzly bear along this corridor here leading to Yellowstone, Highway 191. Right on my right shoulder is that eagle I just, just uh, filmed. I never get tired of seeing this stuff. I was on my way to go fishing and I've been seeing lots of elk and now I have these two moose directly in front of me. It's around 6.15 in the morning. I'm in the um, west entrance of Yellowstone close to my cabin. Look how close these moose are to me.
I watched uh, the last four or five years of my films that I've made, and I definitely have a pattern which could, if somebody were to watch and say, wow, I keep doing the same things over and over. And to a certain extent, that would be true. I'm, I'm always out here uh, in May and August, and of course, February for skiing. And then I just can't, I don't know if there's another area in my life outside of my family that I'm that I'm content. I'm as content as I am when I'm out here. And the wildlife at this time of the year is the best. It's <clears throat> the air's crisp in the morning, it's I'm looking at it's 33 degrees. And there's wildlife I'm looking at an elk right now. And I've seen herds of them this morning. I'm on my way to fly fishing. Some of the best fly fishing I've ever done has been on the Henry's Fork with Tim. And I guess every time I come out here, I get so reflective as to sometimes you go into an area and you're good and you're ready to move on. I hear a lot of my friends or acquaintances tell me that they'll go visit somewhere and they're ready to move on to the next place. <clears throat> where I don't feel that way. I'm, I'm anxious, I, and I don't feel like I've seen everything around here. Tons of elk I'm seeing this morning. Two more look over here on my right. I heard there was a many bear sightings along this area, Highway 191, as you approach West Yellowstone. <clears throat> Great diary. Don't know if any of my children are going to watch any of these videos. Probably wind up in a trash can someday. It's okay. It's okay. Well, I'm going to sign off for now. And um, I'm looking to catch a lot of fish and see a lot of wildlife as this time of year is never disappointing in any of those areas. Buffalo in the middle of the road. I'm going toward my fly fishing place in Idaho. Look at the size of them. That's a big buffalo. I wonder how he's going to get over the other side of the fence. He actually going to leap that? Maybe you guys are temperamental. spoiled because I, spoiled comes across as I don't appreciate and every video I've ever made I'm always talking about how much I appreciate of the incredible wildlife experiences I've had but up close like I immediately thought of all the great bear experiences how very close I was to those animals and the beaver experience which I've never been able to duplicate again I knew that was gonna be a once-in-a-lifetime experience with the beavers having these moose really close to me just now and those buffalo. Um, and I'm, I, I've been up for 45 minutes and I've already seen uh, the buffalo and herds of elk and sandhill cranes. And, uh, that strip right there coming from my cabin to Yellowstone is, is really good. And I think I'm probably gonna do a lot of hiking there this, this week. I'll hit Lamar Valley or Hayden Valley one more. And then I'm gonna probably hit a lot of hikes there this time around. This fly fishing uh, river that I'm going to, the Henry 
Bay Fork has been phenomenal for three years. I've caught so many fish. I've had, I've never caught so many browns as I have on the Henry's Fork, and I never caught the biggest brown I ever caught was on the Henry's Fork. So I'm approaching West Yellowstone right now. You're going to make that turn off to go there. What a, what a great, great experience. I'm sure today will, will, will be. I'm so distracted. I'm looking all around. I think I'm looking at a buffalo on the middle of the road here. But now it's a car. Okay. One surprise me. Year four, Mesa Falls with my main man Tim. Our fourth year fishing together. He showed me this four years ago. I swore I wasn't going to film it again after I saw how much I filmed it, but I have to go back with my word. This is why. Tim, happy year. to have Daniel back. <laughs> year four. Yes. How are we going to top ourselves all the great days we've had? We're just going to add more great stories that'll be more fresh in our memory. That's how we're going to top it today. Great. Thanks, Tim. Yep. I'm standing here in a beautiful Henry's Fork, getting ready to fish. And like Tim and I just said, even if it's we catch one fish, just to be in the scenery and be in the thick of it. I really like. I mean, it's nice observing wildlife in the car, but there's nothing like getting in the thick of the, the wilderness or in the middle of a river. You feel a part of it. And that's, that's just the best feeling right there. He should be coming down any minute dragging this raft down, which I'll show you how steep this is. Really steep way up. Got our first one of the day, Tim. Looks like a good rainbow. Nicely done. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got him. Yes. Lively wire. Good job. Thank first you. fish. Nice fish. A couple minutes in. That's a beautiful spot right there. Yeah, right over here. We got away. Oh, we got away. Can't win them all. Tim, two casts, two brown in two years. Or uh, actually, I think it was the year before that. What's going on? You know, once in a while, you just got to demonstrate. You got to just let them know who the master is? You know, Let yeah. the client know. One cast, that's all you need. All right, that was a Show beauty. Show how to do it. That was a beautiful brown. It sure was. That is the Hilton of Beaver Lodges right there. Great looking lodge. I was a beaver, I'd live here. Well, listen, I feel horrible complaining in this surrounding, these surroundings, but I had about a 20 inch brown, could be the biggest ever, and my line, my, not only is my line snap, but the rod snaps. So Roosevelt just died trying to catch a twin. What a way to go down. Right, Tim? Yeah. I mean, if you had to die, wouldn't you want to die fishing like that? It was an honorable death. For Roosevelt? Yeah, Roosevelt <laughs> did good service for many years. Yeah. It's a big fish. All right. Roosevelt snapped. Roosevelt snapped in two. Uh, I'm going to have an iced tea on him later on, and Tim's going to have a what? what? What drink would you probably have? Iced tea sounds You're going to toast to Roosevelt? Arnold Palmer, yeah. You'll toast them? Yeah. Okay. Well, kidding aside, this fish was so big, and all of a sudden we're, we're about, I'd say, six to 12 inches, six to 12 inches away from putting him in the net, and you hear a snap, 
<clears throat> and the fish gets away and Roosevelt dies. All right. Um, Tim's going to ride half mass tomorrow for whoever he takes out in honor of Roosevelt. Oh, gosh. Okay. All right. Thank you. Interesting day. Interesting day. What a place. Adventures of Tim and Dane. Huh. All right. Two more casts. If this was a sporting event, it was like a game that you lost on a weird play. You know, if I hook that brown, I and mean, if I bring that brown in the basket, the whole day totally changes. But it was just a great day nonetheless. A lot of fish hooked, and a lot got away, especially that killer brown. Now, this will be a day I remember, especially snapping my beloved Roosevelt fishing rod. Fishing rod. Okay, let's see what's off uh, for tomorrow. I'm here back at uh, Bacon Rhine uh, Creek, and there was a forest fire here last year. And last time I was here, out of all the hikes along Highway 191, I really enjoyed this one. I never went all the way to the end. <clears throat> I'm going to attempt to do that right now. walking down this beautiful uh, snow dusting that happened last night over this whole area and it's really beautiful I'm walking talking to the Lord dealing with uh, issues that <clears throat> only he and I can work out and uh, loving every minute of it and what better way to get you focused and honed in on him than a walk in his beautiful creation. <clears throat> this is really something. This left a, a profound effect on me. Last year I rode hikes on 191. Not saying that all those other ones aren't beautiful, but this one's special. This takes you to the uh, boundary of the uh, other forest that's connected to Yellowstone. It's about 2.1 miles in, so all together, this is about uh, well, four miles, 4.2. I'd really like to make this. I haven't uh, walked this far in a while. My legs feel good, and it really opens up down here, the stream running next to it. Where all that, those woods are, that's where I'm assuming I'm headed. This hike is how I remember it and uh, how it was advertised in my hiking book. Just flat, opened up sage field, mountains in the background all surrounding you. You can see the side effects of the fire, the burnt trees. I thought it was going to look way worse than this, but it's actually uh, fine. It's going to be a great hike to take Janelle and the children on in August. It's probably be the second hike I did with them. This is all flat and really nice. I hope to make it to the end. Thank you for letting me get your video. I appreciate you. Don't have to worry about me. 
There's a lot of things in this woods you do have to worry about. Okay, Lee Metcalf Wilderness, Gallatin National Forest, which means I made the 2.1 to get here. Now I have to go back. What a great hike this is. This is a really nice hike. It's flat, it's opened up. You feel safe as you can be. Uh, I don't like going in the brush too much. You run along the stream for about half of it. And then you come up to the Lee Metcalf Wilderness. Well, that's an exploration for another day, if ever. A lot to explore around here. 25 years, still haven't seen it all. Well, the funny part about it is, Mangy Moose. I just came from there. I was hiking. This one right there on the road that I just came down. Wow. It's about six o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, and I'm right around near Hayden Valley, and there's this big herd of elk right there. Take it off. drawing me to Hayden Valley. I've been able to see a grizzly for about a good 25-30 minutes. Then I just saw two wolves feeding on a carcass with the help of, I could see them through my binoculars, but a jumbo scope really helped me see them clearly. And now I'm looking at a really big grizzly that just dipped down into a creek. Wow. Getting up early in prayer. I'm going to try to zoom in on this grizzly.
you believe what you're saying right now? It was amazing getting up at uh, four o'clock in the morning is never fun but when you get rewarded like I just did with two wolves feeding on a carcass a grizzly several hundred yards away numerous buffalo numerous elk and then that last one to be able to get the grizzly on film was amazing Wow thank you Lord I've been praying about it and God answered my prayer in a mighty way and I was going to go to Lamar Valley, but something was just pulling me to Hayden Valley today. Oh, wow. I'm just so blessed. I'm just so fortunate to be able to see the things I see. Thank you, Lord. Behind me is the Upper Falls of the Yellowstone. This is beautiful. I'm up near uh, the Upper Falls and discovered this other falls that I've never seen before. It's been a long time since I've seen the Upper Falls. Incredible morning of wildlife sightings. And now I'm in the canyon, hiking above the canyon of the Lower Falls. So, I don't know where this takes you, but it really opens up beautifully. It's not a far hike, according to what I just read. But I hear something. Wow, let me see. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Look at this. Nice people can't even get up this close. Right down there is where the lower falls, the famous Yellowstone Falls, drops 308 feet. Oh, I would not want to fall over that. Whew. Let's see what we're taking. And just like that, I'm in a setting, hiking along. It seems it's very slippery. I'm walking really slow. Covered with snow. Try not to fall. I have no idea where this leads to. But I gotta follow it and see where it takes me. I already saw the upper falls and some other falls that's dropping in, which then eventually leads straight down the Yellowstone Lower Falls, 308 feet. I'm curious to see where it takes me. It's so cool. There's a sign behind me. Just said the trail was closed. I'm assuming this would take you to the bottom of the canyon. But too much snow. And there was a sign. So I'm gonna go try to film the lower falls from a different uh, vantage point. Okay. I can 
hear it, but I can't see it. We have the best seat in the house, don't we? So, the reflection. It's the same one I was watching earlier this morning. It's totally cozy for you for you know, sitting down looking at looking at this wow. reflection in the water. Seems like he could care less about us. How far are we away from him right now? 100 yards? More than that. Think that's more than a football field right there? No, well, maybe just that. The buffalo's right there. That would be yeah. interesting. I don't think the buffalo sees them yet. There's the buffalo. And there's the grizzly. Wow, this ought to be good. Grizzly's moving on. Wow, they're about 100 yards away from each other, not even. Oof. He's not giving ground. Wow. What a morning. So my first grizzly. And these two guys told me about them. And I didn't get a chance to see them, but I stayed patient. And sure enough, he popped out. And I got great, great view of him. This one, I was watching for quite a while. Got great footage of him. And then I went and looked at the upper falls of Yellowstone. Came back, he's still here. Got more footage. Great morning. It's only about 8 o'clock in the morning. We're near Hayden Valley. And way up there. He's huffing and puffing here. Look at this. Coming back from watching the grizzly. Here's two of them, sir. Here's two of them. I think that's the, they call that bear the mud volcano bear. But we're coming back. I sat here about five years ago. I was eating an elk calf. I sat on it for about seven hours. It was wonderful. <laughs> Get that? Man, I can't believe how close we are. I don't know how many boys. I'm on my way. So I'm walking away from following the grizzly, which I can still see with my naked eye right now. And lo and behold, like less than 25, 30 yards, 40 yards, two buffalo walking right at me. I had to do a quick roundabout. This grizzly here has been out here for a while. I'm looking at him right now. All right. I'm driving back 
and I'm just probably about 10 miles away from Old Faithful, and I see two more grizzlies. A mother and a, looks like a yearling. I'm gonna try to right in front of me. Beautiful animal. There's a grizz a mother bear and a grizzly down the road right now. Oh really? Yeah, I just left it. We're at uh, past uh, Grand Prismatic? Like, no, way before that. Like, I'm talking a quarter mile right now. Oh really? Wow. <clears throat> it's there right now. What is this? This is not a shy coyote at all, is it? Oh, yeah. right at us. I never saw such a... Wow, that is not a shy coyote at all. It's almost domesticated. Oh, man, whoa, 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 whoa. Now I don't know what I should do here. Back up, right? <laughs> wow, that is close. That's what, 20 yards? Yeah. Wow, you're not shy. <laughs> My goodness. Japanese guys saying it's a wolf. <laughs> it could very well be the best footage I ever got of a coyote. I had fully planned on going to Lamar Valley today. And then something just kept on telling me, Hayden Valley, Hayden Valley. I just was praying to the Lord and he just put that on my heart. And I've just seen some of the greatest wildlife. I, I, I just don't know how I outdid the year previously, where I just saw uh, four grizzlies today, three wolves, and now that unbelievable close-up. I was the closest to the coyote of anybody who was watching it. Incredible, incredible experiences. So this is where I'm coming up on. There must be 40, 40 buffalo on each side of the road, Highway 191. off the day with its babies. Look at this. I'm on this hike. I see lots of buffalo scat. 
it's a hike right off of 191. It's, it sounds like Genesis Crick or something along those lines. I, I always blow these names. But it's uh, considered one of the most beautiful hikes. 100 most beautiful hikes in and around Bozeman. So I'm right outside of West Yellowstone. Where do you see these beautiful mountains in the distance? So this is where I am. I'm right at the trailhead. Campanella Creek it looks like, 1.5 miles, that's where I'm going to go. And then turn around. If you go to Genesis Creek, it's 4.3. Which means that would be about a 9 mile trip. No thanks, not today. So, I'm gonna go as, this thing really goes far. This is really different, this hike. All these hikes take on personalities of their own. Really open. Beautiful birds singing in the distance. Right on cue. <laughs> Where are you This hike's really different. Really different. You're all alone. And a bunch of, surrounded by a bunch of aspen trees. Almost a mile deep into this hike. And man, you feel so vulnerable. The weather is cold. I don't remember being this cold last year. I remember actually just sitting out in the sun and relaxing my shirt off. But it's cold this, this May. No more extended winter. It's snowing this morning. Huh. Really saw this place. Really open. Yellowstone in the background. I think I'm in the Yellowstone actually. place called Daly Creek which is the first hike as you go into Yellowstone from my cabin on Highway 191. I was here about a, a little over a year ago maybe. Definitely not more than two. And it was a very nice flat hike. I'm just scouting these hikes out to see uh, where I'm going to take uh, everybody when they come out in August. So Daly Creek. Nice and wide, open, flat, can see everything. And this is the nicest day so far. Black Butte Trail, but I might go as far as Black Butte Trail Junction, which is 1.8. I'm just going on a feel like, and I usually like to do about two miles wake you up in the morning. I'm, more, I'm capable more than that, but I usually find it the first couple miles. Right. Can you hear a crick running next to me? I love these little wooden bridges. I'm assuming this is Daly Creek. Obviously, name of the trail. And I believe it goes right into the gallop. That would make sense. There's where I came from so far. And Daly Creek down below. And all these high mountains. There's nothing like this back home. How do you replicate this? How do you duplicate this? You don't. It's like trying to compare one person to another. Completely different. A little, little, little small pond. Probably won't last through the summer. I dry out. 
good spot for a moose, I would think. This is where I came from. I made it to this first orange marker. I don't know if I went a little further past that, but I don't think I went much further past. I'm just gonna go up a little bit more up the hill. Let's see what's up there and I'll turn back. Daily Creek. That's the one I crossed over. I first started the hike. I'm just gonna go a little further up. And when I'm hiking in grizzly bear country, it's extremely frightening. It's so beautiful, but you have to keep in mind all the wild animals are out there and I'm alone by myself. So I wanna make noise to let the animals know that I'm coming. And I just started just singing random songs. That's how I came up with I Love You Jesus. So this year when I was driving to Yellowstone, I asked God to put another song on my heart. And I dedicated it to the Lord and I dedicate this song to my children. I want, I want you to know the Lord. Nothing's more important in this world. So concludes my May trip. And my buddy Maverick here who went on a couple hikes with me this time around. Right Maverick? Good boy, Maverick. Great trip. Uh, grizzly bears, wolves, moose, eagles, elk, buffalo, the usual. That's what's so great about this place. And the great times uh, with the Lord here in the cabin. Coming up with a new song. It was a, it was a, it was a really good, peaceful time. I look forward to bringing my family out in August. That's gonna be something I've been looking forward to for a while. I'm sure we'll spend a lot of hours here at the cabin after we do our daily excursions. Great trip. Thank you so much, Lord. Great trip.